Hello my friends and welcome back. Today I am doing a good old get ready with me Valentine's edition. I want to play with a little bit of color. I have this Reban eyeshadow in Midnight Lights and this is kind of what's going to inspire my makeup look today. It just has the most beautiful purpley blue shadow with silver so I just want to incorporate this so I'm thinking it's going to be a little bit more intense on the eyes, a little bit more color, and yeah, not the basic pink eyeshadow look for Valentine's Day. Um, but that's what we're gonna do today. I hope you guys will enjoy it. Make sure you subscribe if you are new here, and let's get started. Now, on my lips right now, I do have a lip liner stain, which I saw this over TikTok, and I kinda got pulled in. But I've been testing these out and I have to say that I kind of absolutely love them. For somebody who doesn't have a lot of like pigment to her lips, mostly like the line of my lips is kind of completely gone. These are so helpful. They last absolutely all day. Uh, this is the brand Sash or Sashu. I don't know if I'm saying that right. The color that I have on today is O2 Moi. I like that name but my favorite is the three the hazelnut one it's a little bit more brown this is kind of more like a perfect kind of nude ish and then there is one that is pinked which is the three so i bought these as a set and i'll see if i can link them down below but so far i'm loving them i will have these all day on and i just tried the number two this is the first time i'm trying that color and I feel like it's it's a good color. And then, you know, you can put a lipstick on top or like kind of blend it in with a lip liner because there's definitely a difference right now. And I only try these as lip liner stains. But I, so far, really like these. I think they're really cool. I thought maybe they'd be gimmicky, but I've seen a lot of people loving them. So I'm like, let's just try it. And I really think this is going to be the answer to my lip liner touch up throughout the day because these last on me all day even in the morning sometimes i'll see that i have a little bit of a stain left so it's definitely a learning curve with this and maybe i'll do a reel just to show you but so far i really like them now without a doubt the fragrance of the day is gonna be this one. This is the Hibiscus Mahajad Maison Crivelli. I have talked about this quite a lot lately, even on my Instagram and the stories, and that's because I'm kind of obsessed with it, okay? This is such an incredible rose hibiscus cinnamon, uh, just a little bit of cinnamon spearmint, which I think that mint is just like balancing all of this out and it makes it super niche it has so many other notes in it but i feel like those are the main one yet it's so niche it's so pleasant i think anybody would like this and i'm not a big rose lover like i like delina i like delina la rose a lot i like a couple other ones but for me rose it can get a little bit mature real quickly if it's not blended well but this one it's nothing like that it is fresh yet seductive and attractive it's beast mode without being like headache inducing this was sent to me by twisted lily but i picked it out i've had this fragrance before like samples and i was obsessed i couldn't tell you how grateful i am because this is my dream fragrance it is expensive i do have a coupon with twisted lily i can link it down below i think this is probably my top three fragrances in my entire collection. I think it is absolutely incredible. I would pay full price for this 100%. My husband always compliments me when I wear this one and people around me as well. Uh, it's just very pleasant and unique and niche and long lasting. Uh, I will smell this the next day on me. Let's move on to makeup. I'm going to use my Ilia Face Milk. I've been loving this. This uh, again was sent to me. I've talked about this before. To me, like without looking at the claim claims, it's just moisturizing. Oh, not radiant, like glowy. It just makes my skin feel so smooth and plump and moisturized and i love this because it sinks in it has the tiniest bit of stickiness to it which makes my makeup go on really well but that does go away so if you use this just as 
a toner just for moisturization. Um, it, it's wonderful. So actually I should look at the claims. So this is a lightweight moisturizer with hyaluronic acid. So exactly what I was thinking. It's very moisturizing. I love it. It's not, it doesn't peel under foundation. I mainly use it before my makeup because I find it that moisturizing and smoothing, but uh, I can see this being great as your skincare as well. I'm gonna put a little bit of glow this is the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. It's kind of almost gone. Because the foundation I'm using today is my Prada, um, I want a little bit of glow under the high points of my face. I just love that foundation, the Prada. Since I've tried it, it's all I want to wear. Just as long lasting. It, it works with my skin so well. And I've seen the um, Christian Louboutin foundation and I want that, but I'm trying to be a little bit wiser with how many foundations I bring into my collection because I just have so many. So I'm loving this one so much right now that I'm happy to not purchase that one yet. Although it's very tempting. It looks so beautiful on everybody that I've seen. This is a little bit dark. Um, and I knew this about the Prada foundation. I am not tan at all. It's the middle of the winter. But it will be perfect once spring comes. And honestly, like my, my body is definitely much more tan than my neck and my face. So it ends up working really well. If winter was just starting, I probably would have ordered another shade, maybe the one next down, but because winter hopefully is almost over here, um, this will be like perfect match if I get just a little bit of sun. And I really like the combination with the Ilya Milk Base and this. I just feel like it, they just work so well together. So what I do, I like work the foundation in the brush and then go. That way it's just a little bit more blendable. It's not as heavy. I don't put as much product on. And I just let the brush do the work. I just keep blending. I kind of want to move on to my eyes just because I don't know how much fallout this has or if it doesn't. I'm gonna let the foundation set and then put the concealer after. But Raban Beauty, I do already own a, one of the other eyeshadows, which is in All Lights On Me. It looks like that. It is absolutely stunning, okay? This is the most beautiful kind of like Urban Decay Midnight Cowboy, but more elegant. It's even more softer and glimmery. And then you have this gloss here. Honestly, I wish they just gave me another shade here because even though I have used the gloss and I feel like it's a good base, it intensified this color even more. I just wish I had two different colors, if I'm completely honest, just because I don't use that color as much. So that is the gloss under it and the shade on top like the color on top and then this one is just a little bit more diffuse so this one you pack it on a little bit more and surprisingly it has not creased on me when I wore the balm pretty much under it it's not a super wet balm it's sticky but because you put the powder on top it kind of just becomes like good but still i would choose to not have that one and have a different shade here's the swatch up close again with the base without the base and then because i like that one so much i loved this color story right here i haven't even swatched it okay let's swatch this one and then this one <laughs> Look at that. This is the color I kind of want to play with today. I mean, it's probably going to be both, but that's the color that inspired this look. It reminds me of a Pat McGrath shadow. These are $25 each, which I think it's for a higher end. I think it's very well priced. The quality is out of this world. Look at that. 
this is so intense. I want to fade this out because I kind of would wear it a little bit more faded. Yes, see, oh, I just think it's going to be so pretty, hopefully. And that's like them faded out. So this is what I want to use today. Probably should do my brows real quick. And I should probably pluck a couple of things here, but not today. I'm trying to think how I want to start this. My thought is to do something smoky, but this way. And so I think I'm going to start with a matte brown, like the cooler tones here from Pat, not Pat McGrath, Patrick Ta. I love this palette. I went to Charleston and this is the palette I brought with me. I did a vlog, by the way. So if you want to see it, I can link it somewhere, maybe description box or around here. Um, but that was so fun. And this is pretty much the only palette I needed. So I'm just going to put this color right here, the second um, in the cool tone. And just in my crease, it's not too cool tone, so don't be scared, but I didn't want the warmth to go with the shadow. Oh, I'm so excited. And then I'm going to build that up just a little bit with the next shade right here, the middle one. And just build this up right here to give it a shape. What are you guys doing for Valentine's Day? Is it a big thing for you? Do you ignore it? Are you single? Are you, you know, what are you doing? Andrew made this reservation um, at a restaurant that it's like a seven course meal and you don't choose what you get. It's just everybody gets the same thing. And kind of inclined we're trying to think if we do want to go there it's some seafood i eat a little bit of seafood but not too much or should we just stay at home and cook together and like i don't know have a more relaxed date night after the kids go to bed we could do some stuff and some games we're big game people i am kind of leaning towards that um i just feel like a quiet date at home would be fun Let's get into this shadow. I am taking this Angie Hot and Flashy BK Beauty A505. And let's see, I have not played with this shadow, so it's the first time for me. I'm just building this here. Let's see how intense it can go without my finger, because I want to build the shape with the brush and then I can kind of pack it with my finger if I need to. Again, I want this kind of V look. So I'm going to intensify the color here. I'm just going to continue building this up. You could even spray your brush with this just because the formula, it's not, it's like almost like a creamy shadow. So let's see if I use my finger. Yeah, it applies so much more intensely. It's pretty. Look at that shadow. And then I'm going to take another BK Beauty 207 and kind of smudge this all around. I want it smudged for sure. Yeah, I'll make take an even fluffier one and I'm going to take it under here as well under the lash line taking a fluffier brush this is a Zoeva 228 and blending it out and around again I don't want this to be like a line I just want most of the product to be focused here at the edge and then Blend it into the crease, kind of all over, because we're going to put the other shade in the middle. The shade is actually very blendable and easy to work with, which is surprising. So I'm building the lash line more, and then as I go up, I try to fade it as much as I can. And I may use a black liner as well for this part here. And if I see any areas that I need to blend... I just go with my fluffy brush and blend it out. That is such a pretty shade. It almost has like a, not quite duochrome but 
It has some sparkles in it that make it look a little bit more blue, a little bit more purple in one side. There is a little bit of fallout right here, so I'm really glad I didn't put the concealer yet. And again, just blending this out. Let's take a little bit of the Patrick Ta Black Cream and put it on the lash line right here. And then we're gonna put a little bit more of the Rabana Beauty on top of it. And I want to smudge this one around. I may take a smaller mirror and just smudge with the same brush that had the Rabana purple shadow in it. What would you call this, purple or blue? To me, it's a purple with a blue shift, but Andrew calls it blue. Ooh, I like that. I like that combo a lot. Just gives a little bit more depth. Um, I know people talk crap about these cream shadows from Patrick Taba Truly. I think they're brilliant. They're not too intense. They're not too slippery either. So they stay in place really, really well. And I almost always will put some sort of shadow on top of it. So for me, they are very practical. And I just keep going back with the shadow until I have the desired look. If you ever want to intensify a shadow or make it a little bit more smoky, and I'm not talking about like light shadows, I'm talking about like color, put black underneath. It will really make that pop a lot. Now I'm taking my finger to just intensify that color a little bit more. You could even wet a brush if you want to do that with a brush. And you can see just how much more intense the color is here than here. Again, I, I think a wet brush would work really well as well. Now let's move on to this silver. I think I'm gonna use my finger and I'm gonna take a little bit off. Look how intense it is. So I kinda wanna just place it here in the middle a little bit. Let me move my mirror so you can see. Oh, so pretty. I am not swiping it. I'm like kind of slowly adding it because it's so intense. I don't want this color to completely take over um, the purple. And I'm gonna take a little bit of purple and just blend these two together. I'm gonna take the clean finger and in the corner here, I'm gonna try to blend in the color. I don't want the intensity that I have here to go uh, on the inner corner, it's just too much. So I'm just gonna try to focus it in the center like that and with a clean finger, try to spread a little bit of the product there. Now I'm just gonna take some more of the purple and blend these colors together, smudge them together. And then because that silver is so intense, I'm gonna take, this is a old MAC 224, I'm gonna take that silver and this is gonna spread out the product to where it's almost just like some sparkles here and there. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more just to blending, blending it into the purple, kind of going back and forth until I have a desired look. Now I'm gonna spray my little pencil brush and then go back and get the purple color and just intensify right down here on the lash line. I want it to be a little bit more precise and then under here as well. I don't wanna lose that color. Okay, I know it looks a little bit crazy, but once we clean everything up, put a little bit of concealer, I think it's gonna, it's gonna all come together. Also here, you can see that sometimes it's just a little bit rounder. That's when I take like a fluffy brush and I blend the product out, but we're gonna do that after we put the concealer. Okay, let's clean around here a little bit. This is just a dry um, napkin. I probably should have wet, wet it, but I don't want everything to come off. I just want the purple to not be there. I am going to color correct just a little bit with my Charlotte Tilbury. 
I just think this is like the best color correcting little uh, concealer. It's not heavy. You can't barely see it, but it does cancel some of that darkness. Let's use the Dior concealer. This is in 2WP. And clean this up a little bit here. I'm going to put some of my nose here. So I have some darkness around there. This concealer is great even as a foundation like all over. You can absolutely use it. And then here I'm just going to try to be gentle blending this in. I don't want a sharp line. I know some people like that, which is perfectly fine, but I just want mine diffused. I, I want mine to be just, I don't know, kind of everywhere. And I'm probably going to go back after to blend that line even more so I don't have a super sharp line. That is definitely personal preference. I just think it's a little bit more maybe modern if it's not, it's not a sharp line. And I'm being careful with this. Again, I don't just like blend it everywhere. I want to be more specific where, where this is blended into. And I don't need to go all the way under my eye right there, right? Because I already have shadow there. There's no point for me to go and add more concealer and try to blend all that out. So being precise with the smaller brush is very helpful. And if you feel like it's just a little bit too messy up here, you can take your concealer a little bit and clean that section uh, section up. I'm just going to take my first fluffy brush that we use. It has a little bit of the brown in it and I'm just kind of cleaning up this edges. I'm almost pulling the product out a little bit and blending it into the concealer. Same thing on this side. This is my difficult side because I have a dent in this eye so it always looks uneven. It drives me absolutely insane. So I'm not like trying to trick trick the eye and add more color where the dent is like above it so it blends it in again i didn't put any new product this is just the one that had the patrick ta browns on it so if you are committed to this look you could put some lashes on that would be so beautiful mostly if they're half lashes but i am not that committed and i never wear lashes on my wedding day, I put just a couple individuals and that's it. I, I'm just not a lash girl, but um, I kind of like the eye. I think it's kind of fun and just smoky. And again, you can achieve this just by having this and a brown shadow, like one or two brown shadows. I think it's just so fun. Let's move on to the face. Instead of a lot of blush, I'm actually going to do more bronzer and maybe just do a very nude blush look at my lips the lip liner is still there and it will be there all day but i think it's such a good base because then whatever fades it just fades so pretty i just really am into these lip stains i'm probably going to use them daily and i have been i've had them for maybe three four days and i've used them every day and i think they're just so helpful um so the way i contour my nose is with the victoria beckham in travertine uh my nose is not easy to contour i barely do anything just because i have like a bump here that always looks like it's dirty but it's not it's just i remember when i was pregnant with my first child i picked at this section because i had something there and ever since um it scarred and it made a dent there which is fine <laughs> it happens but um yeah when it comes to nose contour i barely contour and this is like the perfect perfect contour shade for me and tool because it's so thin it blends in real quick so if you have a difficult nose to contour and you just want a little bit Check these out. They're expensive, 30 something dollars. You don't get a lot of product, but I've had mine for a very long time, like since they came out and I still, look at that. I still like have that much more. So I'm just saying you don't need a lot. It's, it's just very practical in my opinion. I'm gonna take a little bit of my Westman Atelier in Biscuit. Can't believe I still have this one. I've had it for a long time and it's still here. Honestly, this is a great 
nose contour as well. Um, if you just want to buy one, it's just, I guess, thicker. So you should apply it with a brush. Blending this a little bit. This color is definitely just kind of strictly contour on me. But with this look, I feel like I need, I need to be contoured. And then for bronzer, I'm taking my Shantikai bronzer in the color Sirena and bronzing up. It's just such a beautiful color. It has a little bit of glow in it without being like sparkly. It just, it just makes you look alive. I have not powder yet. And honestly, I will a little bit under the eyes. The foundation does not need to be powder but the concealer has not creased at all. Like at all. I should, I should pull that concealer out more often, the Dior one. I mean, it's been my favorite for a long time. Even after they reformulated, I feel like it's the same pretty much, maybe a little bit more creamier. Um, so it's, it's a great concealer. Also, if you feel like your eye makeup is just not connected to the rest of your face, you can take just a little bit of bronzer, and you'll just kind of make it melt into the bronzer as well. I feel like this tiny trick helps all the time. Just kind of bring everything everything together and it doesn't need to be a lot. It just needs to be literally like a little bit of a dot there. Another trick, I'm sorry, I keep stopping. If you feel like this is too long, you can always take the concealer brush and kind of dab over it to kind of calm that section down a little bit. So if you feel like one side is just longer than the other, you can always go and clean it up slowly. You don't need to take a wipe and completely wipe everything off. You can just like dab it, be gentle. It's kind of like painting. Actually, it is painting. You're just painting your face. And then for blush, I think I'm gonna take Petal from Westman Atelier. I feel like it's like the perfect blush for this look. And I'm not gonna go straight on I want to put it on my brush first and then tap it. I don't want a lot of blush, okay? So I just want a little bit. I'm not going to overdo with blush. And then for highlighter, I'm going to use these new Sephora mini highlighters. I really like these. I'm going to use the um, Iced Pearl. It's just really nice and soft and then an old wayne goss number 14 it's one of my favorite brushes um it's just fluffy big so sadly i don't think this is available anymore but i know he brought a new set of brushes which i really do want to try look how pretty that is it's i just find this to be really really nice the price is right just overall good product i don't want too much so i'm trying to make sure i blend it in also i'm going to put powder under my eyes on top of everything and that was intentional i wanted to put the powder last so i can kind of pinpoint where i need to blend the product in more that is so nice and soft i kind of feel like this was more like a class than a simple get ready with me let me know if you enjoy that or not Okay, I'm taking a little bit of my Givenchy powder and I already took some off of my hand and I'm just adding, again, very little. I barely have anything on, on here. I have dry skin, so I don't need a lot of powder. I just want to even out the skin pretty much. And then the rest, I'm kind of going to go a little bit over the contour so it won't be so noticeable. But I'm also going to take a different, like a finishing powder and finish just everywhere. This is more focused under the eyes. I feel like if I don't set my under eye, it just looks a little bit too shiny. Even for somebody who has dry skin, I always set my under eye. And now, because I'm bougie, I'm taking my Guerlain little powders. Um, this is not powders, the meteorites, pearls. And I am just buffing this all over. It gives like the most natural glow. I just find it such a beautiful product and I put it everywhere. This is pretty much me blending the concealer, blush, 
highlighter everything together. On the lips, I'm going to take Temp 3 from Hourglass and contour a little bit. I mean, I already have that lip stain on or liner stain. And just adding a little bit of this. I love these Hourglass lip liners. They're just so smooth and creamy, yet they set down and last all day. I do want it to be quite nude, so I'm gonna take the Prada in P159. It doesn't have that name of the product, so I don't know the exact color name, but the number is that. Yeah, I like that. And I'll just add it in the center and then blend it out. I want the lips to be kind of just there, but not the focus whatsoever. I don't think wearing the pink top was the best idea ever. Honestly, I didn't even think about it. I just saw pink and I was like, oh, it's Valentine's Day. I didn't even think about the eye look that I was gonna do, but you can kind of disregard that and my pink nails. Okay. Anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed this look and hanging out with me and I hope you have a good one. I will see you in my next video. Bye.